So in this video, we're going to determine whether planet Earth could somehow manage to take down the insanely powerful Viltrumite, Omni-Man. Now, Invincible is a show that somehow managed to cement its name in the world of superhero fiction, in a time where it feels like there are only two major players, Marvel and DC. Well, DC is neither here nor there, but anyway, it's not that surprising to be honest. I mean, Amazon Studios have been doing awesome work in choosing the right media to adapt. There's The Boys, Will of Time, and of course, this. Frankly, this show has been on my radar for like the longest time, but I never got around to watching it. Until now. And I'm glad I did. If there's anything this show really has going for it, it's the characters. Almost every single character is interesting and has something to offer the plot. Especially our main character Mark Grayson, Invincible himself, and his unbeatable dad, Omni-Man. Or is he? If you somehow didn't notice while watching the show, Omni-Man is from a planet called Viltrum, where they practically murdered every weak person in their species to produce a stronger, evolved society. And as crazy as that sounds, it worked. Every single Viltrumite after that purge is an overpowered, nigh indestructible douchebag, and they decided why stop with evolving their planet alone, when they could do that for the entire galaxy. And thus, their quest to become the intergalactic Roman Empire begins. They send delegates from among their ranks the planets they wish to conquer to prepare the planet for a conquest. And as we find out very terrifyingly in the show, our main character Mark's father isn't some friendly neighborhood Protonian rescuing cats. He's actually an ancient alien who thinks of us as insects and wants to cage us in a planetary ant farm. And as you can imagine, Mark, born and bred here on Earth, is not too happy with his father's views. He's especially not happy with him calling his mom a pet. Yikes, son, I thought my dad was an asshole. Anyway, they inevitably fight, and while Cecil, the head of the Global Defense Agency, has already used so much at his disposal to try and weaken Omni-Man, it's only like a disturbance, really, because Omni-Man still has more than enough power left to pummel Mark and almost destroy an entire city. And while watching that fight, I couldn't help but wonder, is humanity this powerless against him? Well, that question got stuck in my head like a popcorn kernel between my teeth, impossible to ignore and strangely irritating. So I decided to get answers to that question myself and hopefully give Cecil a tip or two in case of any future rogue world-crushing Viltrumites. And you know, one thing a lot of people bring up, both within the show and in real life, is that Mark is somehow the only hope against the Viltrumite attack. And to be honest, that's kind of disappointing. I mean, for someone who calls himself invincible, he sure seems to be getting his ass kicked a lot. Like, a lot. I've seen less pummeling in a pinata factory. Sure, Mark's a great asset, but is he really going to be our last hope against an alien warlord with literally thousands of years of combat experience? Yeah, didn't think so. That's why we're going to turn to physics and technology to do the trick for us. But to do that, we have to clarify some things first. First of all, the Earth I'm going to be talking about is the Earth in the Invincible lore itself. One, because it's their world and not ours, and as you can probably tell, there's more than one differences between our two worlds. And two, the Invincible world has way more technology than our current capabilities. Also, this video is going to be focusing on trying to take down one Viltrumite, that is Omni-Man. And although he's probably as strong as like 5 average Viltrumites, we're still going to use him as our case study. Okay, now that we've gotten these out of the way, let's start by taking a look at what has already been done in the show. Honestly, ever since Cecil had a hunch that Omni-Man killed the Guardians of the Globe, he's been looking for ways to try and, you know, off him. They've tried everything from drugs, viruses, bacteria, prions, even nanobots and radioactives. But Viltrumite cells are quite resilient, which is to be expected, I mean they can live for thousands of years, so obviously their biology is far superior to ours and anything that would harm our cells would probably be an inconvenience at worst to theirs. So while attacking their biology is a good call, it shouldn't be your first option, especially since you don't have a living Viltrumite in your custody. But does this mean that they are invincible? Well, contrary to the show's title card, they are not. We've seen Viltrumites get injured, bleed, and even die. So while they are insanely durable, they are still vulnerable. And to understand what can hurt a Viltrumite, we have to examine what has already actually hurt them in the show. In Season 1, during Omni-Man's murder spree of the Guardians of the Globe, we see him injured and even get knocked out after the battle. Granted, he did still kill them all, but they accomplished a feat that not many can boast of they managed to deal a fatal blow to a Viltrumite. 
Now, I am aware of the overwhelming possibility that Omni-Man could have allowed them to cause that much damage to him to appear more innocent, or he was just holding back because they were his former teammates. To be honest, we really can't be sure if the Guardians really did put that much of a fight, or if he was just going easy. But it doesn't even matter because what we're after is the fact that he can be injured by anyone apart from obviously other Viltrumite. We also see him take damage from a Kaiju called Hail Mary, although he has defeated the creature in the past. So what does this tell us? This tells us that despite his incredible biology, he can still be injured and subdued from the outside. The question is, is there any technology on Earth that can achieve this level of force? Obviously, to take on someone as powerful as Omni-Man, you'd have to weaken him first. We've seen the GDA's attempts to weaken him with the hammer, which is supposed to be an advanced nuclear bomb equivalent. That thing cost $400 billion, and all it did was give him a nosebleed. As Cecil put it, the world's most expensive nosebleed. That is absolutely bonkers. Surprisingly, Sinclair's enhanced Robo Crew did more damage than the beam. Regardless, they eventually bit Omni-Man's dust as well. There's also the issue of distracting Omni-Man long enough that he doesn't sniff out any plant traps from a mile away. And you might have been wondering why I haven't even factored in the Guardians of the Globe in this discussion so far. Well, it's really because they're just a bunch of hard garbage. I mean, Rexplos a walking grenade thrower, might as well be a COD character. Shrinking Ray is good at getting small, not that helpful against Omni-Man. Monster Girl is more like Kitten Girl compared to Omni-Man, robots literally a robot, and then there's Duplicate, who could trademark repeatedly dying. Not the ideal team against the Viltrumite, much less Omni-Man. So frankly, they're basically pointless in this discussion. I highly doubt they'd be useful for anything, including diversion. So now that we know the Guardians of the Globe aren't doing much, we're left with Mark, the Immortal, and Adam Eve. And I say Adam Eve because her powers, while grossly downplayed in the show, are actually some serious mojo. I mean, she can make anything from anything. These are literally the only three heroes we've seen in the show that could be even remotely useful against Omni-Man. It's not like they would win, but they'd definitely be a good distraction while Cecil and the GDA implement the primary phase of their plan. In the show when Mark is reading his dad's books, some Viltrumite weaknesses are revealed. The first being the Infinity Ray, a ray gun that can span literally a planet's diameter and eviscerates anything and everything in its path. Obviously, planet Earth is not in possession of this weapon because it's just way beyond our pay grade. And the only thing that's kind of similar to it in the show will probably be the hammer and we all know how that went. I'd wager the hammer was probably supremely more powerful than any nuke ever created in our own modern world. And all it did was give him a nosebleed, so that's out of the question. But what about gravity? The very force of nature that keeps us all from going on an indefinite space vacation. Nolan himself lets us know through yet another one of his comics that on a distant planet, the Viltrumite center was subjugated to the planet's extremely dense gravity. Gravity is so dense that even Viltrumites are having a hard time moving. And because of this dense gravity, the creatures on that planet were obviously pretty strong because they had to adapt to it. Strong enough to corner even Viltrumites. Obviously, the gravity on Earth isn't too dense for Viltrumite because we normie humans can live pretty fine here. And we're not also insanely strong because of this fact. So that's it. No chance here as well, right? Wrong. You see, while it's not currently possible to increase the gravity by 10 times its normal density in our world, it doesn't mean it's that far-fetched in the world of Invincible. I mean, think about it. They've already achieved light speed travel via teleportation, and they've also basically created full-on cyborgs. Let's not also forget about the Mahler twins, who are able to clone themselves basically without limitations. And we'll still get to that, because that's also going to be very useful. But my point is that the world of Invincible are clearly miles ahead of us in scientific advancements, so creating gravity generators within a localized space shouldn't be that impossible to do. However, even though the GDA are able to prepare a localized gravitational field, trapping Omni-Man within it won't be a walk in the park. And that's where our diversions come in. Mark, the Immortal, and Adam Eve. If we even want to take this a step further, Earth can actually deal a lot more damage physically to Omni-Man than we think, courtesy of our blue muscle geniuses, the Mahler Twins. You see, the Mahler Twins have perfected a technology that can only be classified as groundbreaking, i.e. they can clone themselves as many times as they want, 5, 10, 50, even 100 clones. 
Just imagine how powerful 100 Maulers would be. Granted, this is assuming that the Maulers would generously work for Cecil and the GDA, I'm just going to assume that they'd find some common ground and strike a deal. The Maulers were never opposed to using their technology for other people in the first place. We can even take this one step further and make clones of Kaiju as well. We just obviously need bigger components, and Adamif could use her powers to create those components. She can literally turn an apple into 24 karat gold people, making stuff bigger shouldn't be that hard. Imagine two Hail Marys on Omni-Man's tail and after that, he'd have to fight a hundred Mahler. At the very least, he'd be distracted and occupied enough for Cecil to activate his gravity generators. In the show, we also find out through an uncanny fight between Mark and an underwater sea monster that Viltrumites could also be affected by certain frequencies. This throws off their equilibrium which inhibits their ability to fly. And the fun part is that, this could actually cause them severe pain. Mark was not having fun with that monster, I'll tell you that. The GDA could easily replicate this frequency and even hamp it up how many times over they need to. And they could do this with electronic sound generators hidden with their cloaking technology. Or ultrasonic, like there's literally a ton of ways they could actually do this, this is probably the easiest thing they would have to do. Obviously it wouldn't be cheap, but with the fate of the world on the line, the GDA wouldn't bat an eye funding the world's most expensive localized sound generator. For this plan to work, Mark would obviously have to be out of the scene cause it would hurt him too and we don't want that. Now Omni-Man would not sit around despite the immense gravitational pull on him. He'd still try and find a way to escape the gravitational field and that's why they're going to have to contain him. And there is probably no single element on Earth that can contain a Viltrumite. And I also thought about the possibility of them somehow freezing him to absolute zero, but that would probably not work because as I said earlier, Viltrumite biology is just on another league entirely and he would likely laugh at the frostbite. But while there is no single element that can contain him, how about combination? A combination of some of the world's toughest metals including different advanced variations of diamonds layered on top one another, like a billionaire's wedding cake, with an energy barrier as the topping on that cake. This would obviously take months and maybe even years of preparation, but if it all pans out, even the most insane Viltrumite would be on lockdown. All that would remain would be to find a way to deliver that killing blow which is frankly where the real challenge starts. And luckily, I did not title this video how to kill Omni-Man, I just said it was how they could beat him. Anyway, I'm just gonna give my theory regardless, nanobots are still probably the best bet against Viltrumites. Now I did say in the beginning not to go after their biology, but when you already have a weakened Viltrumite in your custody, the conversation changes. And considering the technology they have, their nanobots would be on a totally different league from ours. Nanobots are precise and can target vulnerabilities in a Viltrumite's physiology. Nanobots could interfere with biological processes and could even mess with their brain or something. And if they really want to get serious, they could launch nano weapons on him. So while it is up for debate whether or not the nanobots would succeed, we can't ignore that it would be a really tough fight. Anyway, I want to know your thoughts. Could planet Earth really defeat Omni-Man or is Earth doomed to bow to our alien overlord? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And hey, help me get to 1k subs. I'll grab the popcorn. Till next time.